This is a $240 package. You got stands, the lights, the power sources, and these bad boys were taken only using these two lights. Yeah, so let's go on set and uh, break it down. Oh. It worked? Hey Tyler, it worked, man! What's good, you legends? I hope you're doing dope. Today we're at the beautiful Hype Visuals HQ and we're talking about cinematic lighting. This is the budget-friendly version for both photo and video. Man, that was a lot to say. Today we are going to be talking about all the techniques that you can use. And you may be thinking that 240 bucks is a little bit more on the expensive side. However, when you're talking about your average nice key lights today, it is one light, it's not RGB, not bicolor, it's just a single light, runs for about 700 bucks. So 240 bucks is significant significantly cheaper than its counterparts. So if you apply these three cinematic lighting techniques that I'm going to break down for you today, you're gonna to get some sick photos and some even better videos. Now, we do have the ability to add a lot more stuff, like scrims and blackout lights, and then, but we're only going to use these two lights that GBM sent out to us that we'll be using for today's video. So not only is it affordable, but you're gonna get some dope looks with literally just two lights. Like I said, it comes with stands and all that good stuff in a nice, pretty carry-on case. It's cute, kind of look like Snoop. Snoopy. Snoopy? Yeah. I love Snoopy. Wait a minute, I love Snoopy too. Rush Hour 2 reference. Snoop. Alright, Tyler, don't look at me that way, bro. Let's let's do the lights. <laughs> So the first thing I'm gonna break down to you is how you can get that studio look. This is that professional, simple, and clean looking stuff. Hey, that's a Kingdom Hearts reference right there, you know what I mean? You know? Simple and clean. Y'all should play some more video games, bro. This is where you normally see like a black background or a white background, like for like products or for like those professional headshots that you see. I used to think that that is really hard to do, but it's actually pretty simple. Let Uncle Joe break it down for you. I don't even know what movie that's from, but we're just gonna go with it like it is from one. Step one, you need to add a 45 degree key. Now your key light just means that it's your main light source, okay? And then 45 degrees, just a little bit to the front and a little bit to your right, call it a day. So these bad boys do full RGB, but because of what we're shooting for, that real professional look, I'm actually going to switch it into the bicolor mode, which allows it to go all the way down to 3200 Kelvin, which is like your lamps in your house typically, like that tungsten look, that orange look. And it goes all the way up to 5600 Kelvin, which is pretty much the color temperature of the sun. Because I want that clean look, I'm gonna go ahead and put these bad boys at 5600 Kelvin. Now there is a second step to this, but I wanna give a quick side note that the majority of all your YouTubers that you watch, they start off with this 45 degree key. It is extremely common, so when in doubt to light anything, just use this, and for the most part, it's probably gonna look pretty good. Step two, you gotta add a 45 degree fill. So basically, all you're going to do is the same thing that you did on one side, you're gonna do it to the other side. I suggest bringing down the power of that second light a little bit lower. If you want it to be cleaner, you can just turn it up more. You're gonna have to play with it so there's not any hot spots like on people's cheeks or whatever, just like in this photo. In some cases, people will change the color temperature to kind of contrast it so they'll put like an orange light, but in this case, I'm going to leave it at 5600 Kelvin on both sides just so it looks really simple and clean. and bam, just made that thing come to life. All right, on to the next one, baby. Oh, well that was kind of pointless. All right, so now we're getting into some color stuff. Now this is my favorite stuff because these bad boys can go full RGB and it gives you full control over the saturation and the brightness and all that good stuff. We're also going to be dipping into some top-down lighting, which is just some fancy word for saying, put the light right above your subject, basically. And then just add another light to the side of your subject. This is subjective, so wherever you wanna have it, but just move it off to the side and just make sure that they are two different colors of lights. Typically, I suggest something that is on the opposite side of the color wheel, so Teal and orange is a really popular one, just like all the other basic people out in the world, including myself. I also did this in a music video and it came out so sick. What good is it to travel and make it worth your while when all you see is life in my profile? You're wasted and faded, a painted, desaturated while I'm calculated, graduated, saturated, underrated.
Now just remember that the top down lighting that we have right now is just two C stands and then a metal rod that is just connected across. And then we grabbed another piece of another C stand and just stuck it right in the middle of it just to be able to hang this light. If you don't have the space to do this, you can always grab the light and then just extend it over. I know there are some tripods that do that. It extends horizontally. You can always put a light up there or you can just raise the light really high, as high as you can, and then just beam it 45 degrees across. It's not gonna look just the exact same, but pretty darn close. And if you don't got the money to do any of that, find yourself a friend, tell them to build some shoulder strength and just have them hold it. And if you don't have friends, then that sucks, I see. <laughs> Finally, we have the third technique, which is you use them as practicals. And I'm gonna put that in all out quotes. So basically every time you watch a movie or any kind of media that is professional, all the lights that you see are typically not real. You can probably see a lamp and it might be casting some light, but they are probably adding another light next to it to make it seem like it's lighting more than what it is. So when you see a night scene, the moonlight is not actually moonlight, it's just a blue light outside. When you see a living room lamp, it's not a living room lamp. It's actually an orange light off to the side that is casting like if it is a living room lamp. So basically you're just doubling up on the light you already have on with something that you can control. This will take some experience, so you just gotta get out there and try it. But make sure your studio lights look natural. To start, put them where the practical light source is coming from, and the rest is really just up to you. If you did enjoy this kind of educational type of video, feel free to check out my website. I have a lot of courses on there around like photos as well as on sound design, along with the presets that you saw in this video. That is a great way to support me because I still got bills to pay, unfortunately. But if you're tired of people always asking for money, if you can hit the like button on your way out and you're feeling very generous, go ahead and comment down below. That really helps the channel out so much. But anyway, I think that that is it. Go ahead and like this video and subscribe because that's what all the cool kids are doing. Follow me on Instagram at Keyboard King if you want to see all the behind the scenes and all of that jazz. And I will catch you on the flip side. Boom.